Good morning. Welcome to Village in Motion. Today is Thursday, July 19th, 2018, middle of the summer. And we are here to have a cooking show with our executives. It's the executive team day. We have executive director, Chandra Kumar, and executive chef, Michael Ritt. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome. And we're going to do a little Indian cooking today. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that is coming up in July is our diversity fair. Very popular here at Green Spring. And part both. of the diversity fair is my favorite part, food. The food. <laughs> so, you know, this is both for residents and staff to enjoy. There's a fashion show. I think we have some demonstrations, some dancing going on. Again, we have the food. And the one you thing that I really like about it is that our team in the dining, especially in the kitchen, is so diverse that it really gets an opportunity for everybody to put their hands in. You know, we have representation from all over the world. So it gives us that opportunity to, if we want to do Peruvian chicken or, you know, uh, maybe Mongolian beef or chicken tikka marsala or chicken adobo or Greek salad, moussaka, or anything like that, right. you know, we, we can do all that. And, and it's gonna be a very diverse uh, menu. I think we're gonna have this item right here, um, you know, to, to showcase. So we're gonna go talk a little bit about chicken tikka marsala. And chicken tikka marsala is an Indian dish. It is, and it's a very, very popular dish. And I know that uh, Chef Mike will talk about a little bit of the origin, but I know when I ask my friends, you know, what would you like to eat? They'll always say, can you make chicken tikka masala? And so now it's become a staple, um, you know, which generally I would have gone to a restaurant to eat because mm -hmm. because of the richness, we don't eat it on a regular basis. But now I found some shortcuts. So as we go through this, we'll share uh, this great recipe that Michael has. Now, now Chandra, you're from what part, uh, your family is from what part of India? So we're from Bihar, which is the northeastern part of India. So it's very close to Nepal and we border Bengal. So. Now, now I can't say that Indian food is Indian food is Indian food. That's correct. There are many, many kinds of Indian food. As the, the dialect is so vast uh, in India, even from the same state that I come from, my husband's dialect and mine is slightly different. There's language dialect. Language dialect. So is the food. And so is some parts of, of India, a lot of it is tomato-based cooking. Other parts, it's coconut is very, very prevalent as an ingredient. Mm -hmm. um, in other parts, fish is more prevalent. So, and the, even the spice levels are different. People assume that Indian food is spicy. But that's not the case. That's not the case. It oh. has lots of spices that we find more as time goes on that has health benefits like turmeric does, fenugreek, which is one turmeric of Turmeric is kind of very fashionable it right is. now. It is, you can it get is. it at Costco yeah. in the tablet form now because it's good yes. for your blood pressure and your blood sugar and even for Alzheimer's, they say. I've so. heard that recently. Because it is. It has a history of being an antiseptic in India, but it's also part of cooking. Yes. So that's how the, the, the cayenne or the pepper, the hot pepper part of it varies from area to area. So the dish that we're doing today is chicken tikka masala. Right. Not the same as marsala that exactly. we have in our, often have in our dining rooms. Right. M-A-S-A-L-A. And masala translate to spice. It's to really spice. spice. Okay. In, 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 the, in Hindi, the language, it means spice. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to you two to get started. So, you know, when we talk about the regions, actually chicken tikka masala came from the Punjab region of India. That's, there's many different origin stories to where it came from. Some from the Punjab district in India, some from, there was a restaurant in Glasgow, Scotland, that supposedly this was created. And the story goes that the chef there was serving chicken curry and the bus drivers when they were done their you know, tours and, and would come into, and it was a very popular restaurant for the Indian community and they would all come in and one driver one day had chicken curry, said it was a little dry, sent it back and the chef of the restaurant at that time was having cream of tomato soup. He said, why not add some cream of tomato and some spices in there? cooked it up, sent it back, and the driver said it was delicious. And as they say, the rest is history. But it's a very, very popular dish in the United Kingdom. The second most popular foreign dish next to Chinese stir fry. Well, that, that's one important thing to say about Indian food is that Indian food doesn't stay in India. Indian food has traveled worldwide. Yeah, as, as all food from so many different countries, we find like you go down and you drive down Route 7 now that I live in Virginia and you can hit 
pretty much every country um, and the different styles of cooking that's right. out there. And we maybe want to put some oil in there and get those. Yeah, and looks let's good. Get one thing about Indian food is saute time is, is pretty extended. So get this started. Well, what we're going to do also is we're going to heat up the chicken a little. Put, now, I'll go ahead and put absolutely. it Absolutely. So what I did earlier today is we took the chicken and it gets marinated in a marinade of yogurt, lemon, cumin, cayenne, paprika, cinnamon, a little salt, and fresh lemon juice. And you let that marinate for an hour, at least an hour. And then what we did was we grilled it. And now we're gonna finish it off in here. So what we're gonna do is add some onions. I'm gonna add some jalapenos. I can tell that this is not an exact recipe. This is a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It is. A pinch is. of this. And that's what's great about Indian cooking. People ask you, Chandra, what's your recipe? You know, and it's really more a learned process and it can be altered. It doesn't have to be set in, you know, a specific amount. As baking is an exact science, um, Indian cooking in this format is really not an exact science. It's really based on your choice in, of taste. I'm gonna put a little, I know you like cumin. All right, so put a little bit more of the cumin in. So this is, this is an, <laughs> there Indian, you go. an Indian woman's heavy handedness here. I think you added a little garlic there, Michael. Yep. All right. And we're done with that. And then we can actually transfer and put a little of the chicken in. Okay. So we'll get that spice on there. And then here we have so this is fenugreek leaves. Uh, this is, um, it's, a, it's a very strong, it's a dried version of it. Fenugreek is, fenugreek is also called meti, and it has a very pungent taste. So you just add a very small amount of it in there. And you'll find this in the other recipe that's uh, very popular, butter chicken in Indian restaurants is very common. And that's actually, it's really good heard. for butter blood chicken? sugar also. Oh, okay. Very popular Great. dish, butter chicken. So no, the word fenugreek? Oh. Fenugreek. Fenugreek. And then we have a little paprika. And paprika is not spicy, but that adds the color That's and some color. Of the depth of the flavor. Paprika is one of those spices that looks hot but isn't. Right, that it's not. And you can, if you do want to make it spicy, you would add a little bit of the, the cayenne to and it. You have. So this is, this is clarified butter, and you can use this, but we use, I'll use a little bit of it just to keep kind of things flowing. You can put it in at the end. It's kind of like the finish at the end. It's a we nice put finish, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little tomato. Now, I have to tell Chef Mike has done a great job of using tomato puree, but I like to cheat at home sometimes. Uh -huh. And if I have spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce, I'll throw that in um, and just to speed up the time. Uh -huh. Or when the kids are like, Mom, can you make this for us? Uh huh. Um, and you can even do this with um, tofu. You can do it with paneer, which is the Indian cheese. So you can make a vegetarian version. Now, Michael, what was that? Just, just heavy cream. In? Heavy cream. This is not necessarily a low calorie dish, no, is what not. you're telling That's us, or low fat. So if you can substitute um, some yogurt ahead of time in the saute and then add less cream uh -huh. to give it that creaminess. But again, it's, it's something that you do, don't want to be eating on a daily basis sure. if you have cholesterol issues. If you don't, then don't worry about it. And then we're just letting the sauce cook a little, cook the chicken in. Mm -hmm. And the color is beautiful. Very nice color. Now, I was, I was telling Chef uh, Mike that I sometimes will use a um, product which is uh, pre-mix for the marinade mm -hmm. and I just add it to the yogurt and the lemon juice as he did marinate it put it in a Ziploc bag I can throw it on the grill in the barbecue and then we just throw it into the so, pan so what you're saying with with that product and that's something that I'm sure is available I, I heard you all say it's available at Giant or right now but it but also <coughs> at a lot of our, our international grocery stores and we have some wonderful ones around here you can you can find things like this that are just a helper for people who don't have these 9,000 spices available <coughs> on their shelf at home. Sorry. That uh, 
they can find some pre-mixed spice mixes like this to help get started. And also if you're making it for the first time, it helps you out and you don't sure. want to buy all the ingredients or you right. don't have all the ingredients. <laughs> I want to try it. I don't know if this is going to be something that I'm going to want to do a lot, so I don't want to buy all these right. ingredients. Right, that's a very, very good point. If so we're just going to turn right it down a little. You know, we were talking about different regions, and you and I were talking about this earlier, that no different than this country. That's right. You know, we have the barbecue down south. We have Creole food down in Louisiana. We have our lobster, clam bake, seafood, you know, in, in New England. The Midwest is very, you know, got the beefs. And, and so it, it, it's, it's a little different everywhere. You have you know? to get out and try it. Yeah. So we have our sauce. So now the very end. I'm going to add a little bit of a garam masala. Now tell us about this that you're putting on. So this garam, is very special. Yes. Yeah, so garam masala is actually a mix of cardamom, cinnamon, clove, and um, green cardamom, which because there's a black cardamom and a green cardamom. So we just a very small amount because it's pretty strong. Uh, there we go. And now this tell is us, homemade. This is homemade. Tell, <laughs> yeah. tell us about this, Chandra. So when you get this in the store, it comes with coriander so that you can use more of it. But this mm -hmm. is my mom makes this. And she gives me a, a, you know, a jar of it and I go through it you know, through the year. But um, it's, it's like a finishing uh, at the end, as with the cilantro. So you put it on just at the very end. Just at the very and end. And it's pretty strong stuff. It's pretty strong stuff. Let's but your mother makes it for you. You don't have a clue how to make it. Uh, I, I have a sort of an idea, but um, I'm letting her still do it. So me. one of these days, you're going to ask your mother how to do it. Yes, or you're going to maybe <laughs> make it with her. Uh, yes, I'll just make it with her. That would probably be the good way to do it. So now this is how it's served. So now there's many different ways. You can, I'm just putting it in a cup here, but you can, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can serve it over rice almost like a curry. Yes. Um, We'll do a little of both. But like Chandra said earlier, it's a very rich dish. This wouldn't be something that you'd be making three, four nights a week right. at home. Um, it smells very nice. I love the cumin, you know, and... Great color on that, Sarah. Yeah. I think you did a fabulous job with that. Well, thank you. It's beautiful color. So... Like we said, for a diversity fair, you know, come on down. This will be one of the items that we're going to be doing. And, you know, it's just a great opportunity, you know, just for everybody. This is like a community, not just for residents, for the staff, just a, a time for the community to come together in, in just different aspects. And it's really important to get out there and try it. You, you never know what you're going to like until you try it. And, and you have to, you have to, and you don't, and the one thing that's good about the food at the Diversity Fair is you're not going to have a big plate of it. Right. You're going Go to have to have sample. just a little right. bit, yeah. and you can try it, and you, you might be surprised. Yeah, I, th I, you know, I always tell people, you, you don't know until you try it. You know, when my older boys were growing up, I'd, you know, play around in the kitchen, and they are like, ah, and I was like, yeah, I didn't even try it. <laughs> that's right. You know, a few years ago for, a evening with the chef, we did alligator tail. And when we went out okay. to the residence, <laughs> we did fried alligator. And? And servers were coming back for seconds and third plates for the uh -huh. tables. There you go. You know, so I always say, you don't know until you try it. There you go. So. And one of your boys is now a chef himself. He is so in the he's Navy. Out there trying. Yeah, yeah. He's, trying he, new stuff. I, when, when he wants to come back, we have fun in the kitchen. And I bet I, you do. Yeah, he, you know, I, he just did it. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to follow in your footsteps. He just, you know, all my jobs, he used to just tag along, you know, once he became, you know, teenagers, early teen years. And, and he'd always just jump in the kitchen and, you know, like to get his hands dirty, as they say. So when he went into the Navy four years ago, he said, you know, I'll, I'm going to be a culinary specialist. Good. And he's on his second ship. He's in Japan. Well, actually, he's in the North China Sea, but he's stationed out of Japan. And, uh, He's loving it. His, his career goal is he wants to be chosen because at the White House, the Navy handles the culinary operations right. in the White House. So his ultimate goal is to be selected for the White House 
Navy culinary team. Wouldn't that be exciting? Yeah, I would be so very, We will yeah. look forward to that. Proud moment. Yeah. It That's would, it good. would. So I, I know when we were at, we spent a, a very short period of time on the diplomatic circuit, and I know many of our residents have done that. And you get out there, and you are in situations where you are eating things that you never thought you would ever put in your mouth, and right. you do it. And sometimes it's like, well, I never thought I'd eat this, but it's not all that bad. I think you have to have an open mind. Yes, you do. You know, right. and try different things you know right. that's why you'll see we put stuff on the menus here and we know what the old reliables are we sure. understand that if we put certain things on the menu that the residents are going to gravitate towards them but every now and then we'll throw something on there we'll do lamb i know we did go curry once and I, th I think lamb is something that a lot of people coming in here haven't eaten much of before and, and I think it's really neat for people to, to start eating lamb and go, well, I do like lamb. If you have like true lamb, shepherd's pie, that's great on lamb. So, sure, but a lot of people haven't eaten shepherd's pie before. Right, so there, there, there's so many different things that we're looking at. You know, I know that Chefs and Now Mama over in uh, Jefferson likes to make jollof rice, which is, is an African dish and very popular, and, and I know the staff loves it, and, you know, we've done it many times we actually did it at the uh employee, employee picnic. picnic right it was a big and hit and big they loved hit. it very nice. we did Great. you know and that's another thing we did street corn which is a central and and, and a mexican and central uh item if you go to a lot of the fairs and carnivals around mm -hmm. here you'll see it and uh, basically we took corn and cooked it right. right way and then what we did was we had many different ways that you can roll it in different toppings we Ooh, had candy bacon we had garlic parmesan we had like a cayenne uh, sauce, so. What fun. Oh yeah. So, you know, we take advantage of these opportunities. You know, to, we did Peruvian chicken at, at, at the employee. Mm -hmm. um, oh, see, now, now you're going to have residents coming forward saying, well, why can't we have street corn? Oh, we could. Oh, we could, we could that you might, know, why, that why That might not? be kind we of fun for an you action know, maybe, station. Maybe we try it at the diversity fair. Yeah, you know, that or might maybe be a good an idea. Action and, and, and it's a great opportunity for the residents to try different foods. Mm -hmm. You know, a, as we move forward, you know, our, our residents are very diverse in their, uh, I guess, their food knowledge. Residents come in now, they're very educated, very knowledgeable on food, and they want to try some different things. Some are and things. some aren't, so I think it's good for us to Well, to that's why we have some. that, and that's why we have yeah. that balance also that we do have the old reliables. You know, I, I tell people, oh, I work at Greenspring. Oh, you just make mashed potatoes and meatloaf. True no. that, but, we, but we, have, we have great mashed potatoes and meatloaf. But, 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 but exactly. I say when we variety. say we do sea bass and we do rack of lamb, you do that there. Yeah. We do crab cakes, lobster tails. So and you know one place where you really do introduce some unusual things that people would not be accustomed to are in the, is in the soup area. Oh, we right. do so it's many different it's soups. A soup. I never loved last night chicken pot pie soup. Whoever thought of calling it? Oh, it's good, isn't it? I, I, it was wonderful. It's a bowl. It's a bowl of comfort altogether. Oh, yeah, yes. right. And the strawberry soup. And the that's strawberry right. soup. It and it's like, funny about the strawberry dessert. soup <laughs> because some residents are like, "Well, that's not soup. That's dessert." Some residents love it as soup. That's and, right. You know, yes. it's so like you said, it's so humid and so hot. Yeah. That it is a comfort for but them. But a lot of so. diversity. Yeah, it's a choice. Good. It's a matter of choice in being able right. to go to the different venues and get different sure, right. um, entrees based right. on what you choose. So, uh, Michael, I have a question. We have a we have a pile of vegetables over here on the corner of our table, and I don't, I frankly don't know what some of these are. Okay, so educate we, us a little we bit. We have some cilantro. All this was in the dish today. Oh, okay. Now the the, the ginger and the lemon. The um, ginger is the one that looks like a oh, root, I'm sorry, right? Here we go. That's Let ginger. Me take that up. So we have some fresh ginger, and I used that in the marinade okay. for the chicken. And we put a little in the saute when we did it Correct. initially, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And then the cilantro we put over at the end. You uh -huh. see some cilantro here. And then I used fresh lemon juice in the marinade. Uh -huh. And then, again, we used some jalapenos that we diced up uh -huh. in the sauce. So these are just some of the fresh ingredients that we used. So one, th one thing I'd like to point out to our residents that, that these are not things that we went out and, and bought just for today's, oh, no, we use for today's every day. demonstration. Just we use fresh ingredients like this every day. We are, yes. we are when we use ginger, kitchen. we're not buying it out of, we're uh -huh. not using ginger out of the little, little jars that no. come from no, the store. No, no. We buy we're whole, using, yeah, we buy whole garlic and mm -hmm. we grind it ourselves. You know, like you said, all our soups are made in-house. We and don't wonderful. pop a top and throw it in a pot and heat it up. Yeah. Um, 
All and I, I had that discussion with the resident the other day. She said, well, those canned soups. So I, there happened to be a chef walking through at that time, and I just pulled that chef over and said, tell me how we make our soups. They're and, all fresh. And we you know, make we're, them we're, fresh. we're pretty much a scratch kitchen. We, listen, we cut our own chicken. You know, we have the fresh chicken now, so we, we portion our own chicken. We trim our own salmon. We cut our own fillets from tenderloins. You know, so we, we are, you know, it's a working, functioning, scratch kitchen. You know, if you go over the Jefferson, plenty of their desserts are made in-house. You know, they, the flam I know is a favorite. The mm -hmm. sticky buns I know is a favorite. The pineapple upside down cake they do, plus so many of the other cakes. So there's a lot of talent, you know, in these four walls. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I always encourage residents. I know our residents are very territorial. I love to eat at Woodland. I live right down the hall. But I encourage our residents, if you really want to enjoy Move out. dining here, try travel other, around. Try yeah. other venues. Try other venues. Right. So it's, and, and it's a great opportunity. Your, your, your variety, when you look at three menus, your variety, you have over 70 entrees every night. So. Yeah, every time I see someone write on a comment card, well, they're just, you know, I get tired of the same thing every night. I just want to call them up and say, Guess what? Count how many different entrees you have right. every night. It's a matter of trying it uh, in different venues. Yes, yeah, right. And yes. I'm always surprised, and I tell everyone all the time, I said, I cook seven, you know, pretty much not seven, but five days a week, and it's hard for me to think about what to it cook is for hard. one entree. It's difficult. Let alone if you're thinking of yeah. the span of what we do. My wife so. always makes fun whenever we have guests over. I can't cook for four people at home. Right. It's, uh -huh. just, it's impossible. It must be difficult. <laughs> it's impossible. It's, you see the heavy-handedness on my part, too. Right. That's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and, and I don't, you know, at home, it's, well, I got some of this and right. some of that. But, you know, going back to, signature, especially signature dining here, you know, it's a resident-driven program. And I know you and I have talked about this many times, that Signature Dining was created out of resident surveys and, and, and resident comments. And here's a program that, you know, you have more flexibility. If you don't want the sauce, if you want extra sauce, if you want it on the side. I always say about Signature Dining, you can take it out. You can't add, but you can take out. Right. You know, if you want a stir-fry and it has chicken in it, ah, I just want a veggie stir-fry. Okay, we can take the chicken out. You know, if you don't want soy sauce and you want the vegetable sauteed in olive oil, we can do that. And this is a good opportunity for us to, again, remind our residents, if there are foods that you would like to see in our, in our dining rooms, please put it on a comment card. Write it on a comment card. And very soon, within the next few weeks, you're going to be seeing a new design of comment card in our dining rooms. So watch for that. It's going to, you're still going to have the opportunity to write your comments in but you're going to have an additional opportunity to put some other comments on there so keep an eye out for that but if there are foods you would like to see in our dining rooms please write that on the comment cards we always tell people we don't know what we don't know that's right you know if if you don't speak up and if you don't put a comment in there, there's there's so many platforms for our residents to communicate in we have you know our dining councils we have the mini councils for each venue we have our forums that that we're doing for dining we have our call-in show. We, you know, we have, uh, you know, we're always walking through the community, not just the dining rooms and the common cards. That's right. You know, and that's that's also for. You talk about we've got the coffee with the exec team. And then that's that's just dining. That's just dining. That's just dining. dining. Then you the incorporate all the other departments. Yeah. You know. And Chandra has has increased you and, and all of the departments have yes, increased the have. number of of forums and and. Uh, opportunities, opportunities to, talk to, to to share your to share, thoughts yeah. so so if as residents people are saying well nobody listens to me please watch what's going on watch announcements in your cubbies and on the green spring flash and and on the scroll lots of opportunities to share your thoughts they're out there they're out there please Folks join are listening. us we, yes, it's great right. to hear you know comments about opportunities and there's great to hear comments about what we're doing well because we don't, we don't, we want to hear those also, yes, so right. we can we can reinforce that if we're doing something well. We want to keep doing it well. Yes. So, uh, yeah, it's been right. really good interactive conversations. Yes. Uh, I mean, if you look at dining, a lot of things. Prime night we did a couple of weeks ago, that came out of right. resident comments. We did steak night, and they said, "Oh, we love steak night. What about a prime night?" And it worked well. Uh, when it went. Yeah. It was phenomenal. You know, so so we hear the things. You know, you, you're going to see in the Jefferson more themed meals. They wanted the action stations. You know, obviously during a certain period 
uh, in the winter, we couldn't do the access stations, but they're back now. And I know it's a fan favorite in the Jefferson, mm -hmm. and I know they like that. And I've been hearing a lot of comments about both Fireside and Woodland and the variety in the menus. And each one of, each one of our, our dining rooms has its own personality. It, it really does, because even our chefs have their own personalities sure. and skill sets. I mean, we've right. got, you know, if you talk about Zeneb, she used to be a pastry chef uh -huh. and is in our Jefferson. And then we've got Giovanni, who's got the Italian, um, you know, uh, background and right. is, is very strong. And so, you know, and then Mark's got his own style and he's always doing new and interesting right. um, specials yes. in the fireside. So there's always, as I, as I go through the dining rooms, I always hear that you know, this was a great meal right. or, you know, hey, I got to try and something And all of these different. folks have no shortage of things that they're out there wanting to try. Right. Lots of great ideas. Yeah. And I think yeah. the thing that's been really wonderful for me as the executive director has been to see the chefs all come together and work to build up on each other's skill sets. Oh, yeah. So, you know, they, they, they encourage each other, they work together, they try menus, and, you know, and Ty has done a really nice job of bringing them together so that everybody's not kind of in their own little island and in their own kitchen. They're really great They're team. together. Yeah. Also a great thing is that, I don't know how many people know, but Ty is actually a CEC, which is a certified executive chef. Oh, he's fun now, to watch. Now, they don't hand going. those out at the store. <laughs> right. You know, and there's only two Erickson wine. Of everybody, there's only two certified executive chefs. So it's great that when you're dining director, you can walk in there and you can actually, you know, it's the same talk. And hey, you know, we, we have the CETs coming up in, in July, the corporate executive team. Hey, what can we do for that? Or we have Culinarian Day coming up, you know, in July. What do mm -hmm. we want to do? And we all sit down, and Chandra's correct, you know, we all feed off each other. And, and I think I will say this every day. This culinary team will put them up against anybody, anywhere, anytime. I, I think we have a, a team to be envied. I do. And we hope you'll all stay And forever. they're all artists. So the plate is their oh, canvas, they are. Right? Yes, it's wonderful. But well, we thank you for coming today. Thank you. And for sharing your Indian culture and for sharing your, your skills at putting it all together. It was really fun. I certainly enjoyed learning. Thank you. And I thank can't wait so till we close down here so we can taste some of this. I think we should taste That's right good. now. Here we go.